How's everyone today? I'm here with my week 7 of the WWE Cruiserweight Classic Review. Of course, tonight's episode took place on August 24th, 2016. And without further ado, let's jump right into the episode. Of course, tonight's episode opened up with Rich Swan versus uh, Lynn Storato. I thought this was a very fun opener, you know, right from the get-go, both men going right at it uh, against each other. Uh, there were some co uh, comedic spots in this match as well from the very get-go, like, you know, when Rich Swan tried to do his dance, but, you know, Lynn Storato told him, pretty much tell him no and wouldn't let him do it. So I thought that was pretty funny, and then, of course, you know, the match... Really started getting underway. He had a lot of nice combinations of high flying mix as well as some nice counters. You know, both men knew each other very, very well and were doing some really nice counter maneuvers. Um, and both men started getting heated up. You know, Rich Swan's pretty much known for, you know, playing around, but once you piss him off, he gets pissed off. Uh, Lynn Storato made the mistake of just, you know, hammering him with some fists and some kicks. And uh, I think he slapped him, which pissed off Rich Swan. Rich Swan just had that serious look on his face and just went completely off on Lynn Storato. And the match really picked up from there. Uh, the match got taking place to the outside with uh, Lynn Starr doing a nice dive on the outside as well. Uh, some nice maneuvers. Like I said, a lot of great combinations, especially when they go for the Hurricanrana. I really like the interaction. They'd go for the, like, you know, uh, they'd go for Hurricanrana, then one of them would, you know, do like a somersault, like I think uh, Rich Swan did the somersault, and then he tried to do a Hurricanrana to Lynn Storato. Lynn Storato pretty much did the same exact thing, rolled out of it into a. Um, into a somersault, so I thought that was great um, tactics right there. Just but both men very mirroring each other in this match. I had a lot of great maneuvers, a very nice um, way where um, Lynn Starr went for a German suplex, and when he threw him behind, uh, Rich Swan landed on his feet, rolled up into a huge DDT, which was very very sick for a great near fall. So there's a lot of great near falls, just a lot of great action, a very great way to kick off this, uh, kick off this episode. Uh, ending was great as well. You know, Rich Swan went for the standing 450, hit it, but um, Lynn Starr put his knees up, rolled him up for a pin. 1-2, uh, Rich Swan kicked out, has some nice near falls, Rich Star went for a uh, shooting star, missed it, or did he did he even go for it? I don't recall what happened, to be honest, uh, but Rich Swan ended up getting the win with a um, uh, Phoenix Splash from the second rope on to Lynn Star for the 1-2-3, so Rich, Rich Swan advances to the quarterfinals, like I said, I thought this was a very hot, uh, definitely a great way to kick off the show, the crowd was very energetic in this match, and uh, definitely uh, solidified the cruiserweight meaning of this uh, tournament, because you know it's all about cruiserweights, and this match pretty much solidified what cruiserweights are known for, which are high flying and just great wrestling in general, so definitely a great way to open up the show with uh, Lince Dorado and Red Swan. from there on we go to uh, Zack Sabre Jr. versus uh, Drew Gulak, I thought this was a match of the night. I thought this was an awesome match. Right from the get-go, both men are rushing each other uh, into beautiful moves. Uh, nice technical wrestling here as well. He had some great counters, great, you know, just like I said, just Matt wrestling. Uh, Drew Gulak was just really, you know, outmaneuvering Drew, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. in this match. You know, every time Zack Sabre Jr. tried to maneuver or submit Drew Gulak, Drew Gulak was able to, you know, have one step ahead of him and able to, you know, lock something in or prevent something from being locked in on him. So I thought Drew Gulak was great in this match. So was Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, the story being told was great, you know, like the... The, the aggressiveness from both men, especially Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak looked like he definitely had something to prove in this match. And uh, boy, did he. I think him and Zack Sabre Jr. just put on an awesome match here. It was short, though. It was only about maybe less than 10 minutes. So uh, in the 10 minutes uh, span that they got, they definitely delivered. Uh, this is a perfect way of showing someone that mat wrestling isn't boring. You know, I know, I know a lot of people hear about technical wrestling. I think it's just boring mat submission-based wrestling. That's not very fun. But this match definitely proves otherwise. This match definitely proves that technical wrestling, mat wrestling can be very, very fun. And the crowd I was in this match. I was in this match. It was a lot of fun. Uh, both men just everything. Every transition was just very smooth and very just flawless here. Uh, especially submission holds that are being put into. You know, Drew Gulak put in the uh, gory uh, special on Zack Sabre Jr. Pretty much destroying his shoulders, uh, which looked very very painful. And just you had a lot of great map based submission wrestling in this match. And uh, you know, aggressive side coming out. You know, Zack Sabre Jr. in the penalty kick for a great near fall. Uh, Drew Gulak getting fired up and slapping the sense out of Zack Sabre Jr. to the point where Zack Sabre Jr. sat down and he had a just blank look on his face like, where am I at? So, great story being told. Love the finish where Drew Gulak going for the Dragon Super Bowl, but Zack Sabre Jr. was able to counter into a bridging pin uh, for the 1 2 3. So, Zack Sabre Jr. advances to the quarterfinals. Uh, like I said, personally to me, this is a match of the night. I really enjoyed it. I thought both men worked tremendously well. Uh, like I said, the, the, the submission transitions were great. You know, everything just looked absolutely flawless in this match, and both men put on an, uh, one of the best matches in the tournament so far, in my opinion. So, uh, great, great match there from Zack Sabre Jr. Drew Gulak. Uh, match of the night, like I said, my honest opinion. And then we go to the main event, which was TJ Perkins versus Johnny Gargano. This was definitely a great way to wrap up the second round matches. I thought both men put on a, uh, an awesome match here as well. Uh, you can argue that this was a match than that. I think this match and the previous match was pretty on par. Uh, even though I, I, I do favor the uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Drew Gulak match a little bit more. But this match was definitely you know almost on the same level as that match. This was just an awesome back and forth match as well from both these men. Uh, very similar styles as well. 
from these guys. I just thought both men meshed very well. One complaint though is that John Gargano was selling the knee at one point after um, he hit a dive, a awesome, awesome uh, dive on the outside, and his leg flew into the timekeeper's table and just smashing his leg against it. So his leg was injured there. But uh, and they were making a known commentary that his left leg was injured. But the one thing that kind of disappointed me was the fact that T.J. Perkins didn't take advantage of that. Uh, even though the entire match were mentioning how his leg was hurt, T.J. Perkins did not work on it at all. Even though Gargano was selling uh, great in this match, I just felt like it was kind of a missed opportunity on T.J.P.'s part for not working on that knee and um, you know leading to the finish. But it is what it is. But both, like I said, an awesome match. T.J.P. looked just he looked great. So did John Gargano. Uh, the, the ending was a lot of fun as well. Both great great counters uh you know gargano go for the, the lawn dart but of course his knee being messed up he wasn't wasn't able to deliver it due to the fact that his knee was messed up uh early on the match uh tj perkins was able to lock in the romero special and um just great wrestling back and forth from both these men uh just yeah just one of those matches where you just sit back and enjoy and it's a great match <clears throat> excuse me and uh, great storytelling at the ending, too, with, uh, you know, uh, T.J. Perkins locking in the knee bar on a Gargano. Gargano just fighting with every inch of his, you know, body. He's trying to get out of it, reaching for the ropes. But he just, he's fingertips away, but just can't get to it. Uh, TJ P, TJP locks it in a bit uh, harder, and Gar Gargano taps out. So TJP advances to the quarterfinals and defeats Strang Gargano, which was an awesome match as well. And every match on the show was awesome. I, I honestly think that this episode tonight has been the best episode so far from top to bottom. I think this is the most consistent and great episode. Um, just three awesome matches. You know, the opener was very, very fun. You know, Gulak and um, Saber Jr. was an awesome match. And the main event was a great way to cap off the second round of matches. So I thought everything in the show was great. Uh, just a great hour of wrestling. Definitely flew by without any complaints. And it, it, it was a very, very fun and very, very enjoyable episode tonight of the Cruiserweight Classic. Like I said, probably the best uh, top to bottom episode so far. But yeah, that's, uh, that's it for my review uh, for tonight's episode of Cruiserweight Classic. If you guys liked the video, please make sure to leave a like in the comments below. Please leave your comments on tonight's episode, on tonight on this video. Uh, whatever Cruiserweight Classic related for tonight's episode related, please feel free to comment below. Three episodes left. We're almost done. Uh, I believe September 14th is the finale. So uh, three weeks away from the finale, and we're going to uh, we're gonna crown a Cruiserweight Champion. Well, not Cruiserweight Champion, but Cruiserweight Classic Champion, I should say. So, it should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. And as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. So